What's going on? Alrighty, we are finally at the next phase in this shed to tiny home conversion. Oh boy, this is going to be an adventure indeed. What a pro process it's going to be. A bit longer than I thought. I never really thought just trying to get through the town was going to be, you know, now I've got to get through the county, get everything, and I don't know what I'm up against with that. I'm kind of hoping it'll be a smoother process. I don't know what that is going to entail. We'll most certainly find that out. But now, the next phase of this is I go tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, I'm going to pay the tap and impact fee, which is about $1,275. That's to get the account set up, the tap and impact, to get the water meter in there, and everything is set and ready to roll. She then sends the letter to the county saying, hey, everything's approved. All the permits for everybody's approved in line for you to go ahead and review. Now, here's the good thing. She's been in conversation with Jamie Collins at the county. I'm already on his radar, which is good because he know, remembers he's already looked at my plans. He's talked to her about, you know, I guess trying to vet me a little bit, I guess. She's aware of it and knows, so that, that, that'll, that'll all fall into place, I guess, in some form or fashion. We can only hope. So once I get that done, there's about a, I know a three or four week process that right around within that, they'll get the water meter put in. In the time that I'm waiting for the plans to be approved, it's about eh, six weeks they say out. Hopefully it would be earlier, but you know, six weeks is six weeks. What you gonna do? We've waited this long, what's another damn six weeks? I don't really expect to get started with this thing until about late June versus July, to be honest. That's what it's looking like now, to be honest. So, and that's all right. It just it is what it is, you know. You can't be in a hurry with things. You got to really be methodical about and do right. Make the right choices and, and do it right the first time. But you know, good things don't come like that. You know, if you really want to do something, sometimes it just takes a little more work than normal, I guess. So you just got to kind of roll with it. You roll with it. I'm, I have to because I mean I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, you're dealing with government agencies. You have to kind of deal with that and roll with it. You have no choice. You got to do it. So, but anyway, we got about six weeks on that deal. Within that six weeks, I will run the water line. We'll get that run within the perimeter area of where the house is going to be. That that 13.6 feet by 40 foot square rectangular rectangle is not quite a square but more rectangularly if I said that correctly um, we'll get that water in there and you know if the footing the construction company that's in there doing the footings and the, and the prep with the site prep what needs to move it they can do it I don't care I will be very adamant that anything you need to move you can do I made the trench and ran the water line to here we'll get all that attached and I'll put a temporary faucet because they're going to need water there. If they need anything, they need water. Um, then in that process, I'm going to have to talk to the power company about what I'm going to have to do with that process to get power to the property. This is where I talk about, I know in South Carolina, if you're going to get power to that house, you got to have building permits. Now, I've also said that some of these people are on their own properties out in the rural area in the middle of nowhere. If they want to tie a 50 amp breaker into their breaker box or 200 amp line of their house and run it to a small thing off, off the radar, go ahead. But you know, if you didn't get a permit and something happens, that's between you and whomever. And you have, you've taken that risk. I also talked about, you know, a lot of things like insurance and stuff that you may not get. They'll insure the building, but not the build inside and everything else. Or if they find out what caused that, you didn't have the proper approval to have electricity to that building, they might not cover it at all. But, you know, that's all a bunch of other subject to talk about later about insurance. You know, that's I touched on quite a bit of it. But, but right now, I've got to do everything I'm asked to do by, by law legal way of doing it and do it my way and that's how we will get there and I am happy that I've gotten this far I mean I literally thought with my first idea of doing this I was gonna get shut down saying there ain't no way you can do that it's not gonna happen nope 
They said, you get the plans for it and an engineer, let them set it up and get with the company doing that, make sure everything is done right, we'll approve it. In a nutshell, folks, you know, people, and I've kind of realized you make things harder than they are and look, reading into it a little too much, that um, this is no different from a house that's 2,000 square feet. It's framed the same way. It's just smaller, you know. It's gone with the same building code and the same things that are required for a lot bigger house. It's just smaller, you know, and it's designed to, to withstand in the same realm as a house that's a lot bigger. It's just a tiny home, folks. The only difference is, is this is set into a foundation and there's no wheels on it to where, yeah, it maybe it's tied down, but, and it may rock, but this is foundation, so it's, gonna, it's a bit stronger. I can't hook it up and tow it and take it down the road, so big difference there on that one so anyway that's where we're at with this we get to the county once i get everything them everything they need hopefully this week it's it's not going to happen in a day because one i've got to go get a form notarized saying it's that one i spoke about it's like a, it's an affidavit that says that i am agreeing and i'm stating firmly that i am the sole resident of that house for the first two years cannot rent it and i can't sell it for two years it's okay i don't intend to um, I guess that's their way of making sure everything that's legit and kosher and you know they know where I'm at for two years in case something goes south and something like that. well you know you also got to look at it that they approved everything and they inspected it so if anything happens it falls really back on them because you inspected it and said it was done right I went by the plans and everything was done right so you can't tell me that that I did something wrong you know the only thing would be maybe the electrician or something you know but he has insurance for that so and he's not going to do what he's doing without that and we feel sure that he really knows what he's doing because i know that he does i've gotten some good references on him and they do good work so anyway um but like i say i've got to get that paperwork done go through that it's not as the paperwork is not as bad as i thought but i've got to get all that filed they need two copies two hard plans two copies of the hard plans and I'll get all that taken. We'll get all that filled out. And I, I've got a weird feeling. It, it ain't going to go as smooth as I might, smooth as I might think because it's probably going to be a couple of trips to the to the uh, uh, the building office. You know, the, the planning office, as they say, they call it. You know, I'm going to back and forth things they need or emails, and you know, it's going to be you know a few things they need. So. This could go into next week and it's okay, but we're gonna get it done. Once I get it to the county, it's just a wait. Get the water put in, get with the power company. I've gotta call my insurance company and let them know that this is what I'm doing. Cause he said, once you get to a point where you're making a build something, let me know. I'll tell you with the process to go through about. You're gonna to have to have an addendum on your insurance policy for liability for construction workers and stuff. People come on the property and that'll get removed and then they'll insure the house. They have to have somebody come out and underwriter or adjuster come out, look at the house, evaluate everything. I get them everything they need to get home insurance. Obviously, you have to have a certificate of occupancy and with building code, and they know it was built and pretty much what it costs. Um, and every house I've ever owned, the, the builders always handle that, and insurance companies seem to be able to link with them and get that between the county and the builder. Now I'm the contractor, so I guess I'll find out exactly what they want to the T. So that'll all take care of itself. As long as I'm doing what I need to do, this will all take care of itself. So anyway, off to the next set, my friends. We're going to get there. We are going to get there. So stay tuned. I'm going to get a house on that piece of property yet. <laughs> oh, boy. Might be a little bit of a headache, and it may take a little bit longer than normal. But I'll tell you, it saves you a lot of money and maybe some grief in the long run. But also keep me out of a 30-year mortgage. That's what I'm waiting for. It may take me a lot longer to build this because I'm doing it myself. But I'm doing it out of my pocket. And we're doing it my way. Let's hope my way is the right way. I, think, I feel sure that it is. No one has said yet that it isn't. So I think that it is. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll keep you informed on the next step when something else cool comes along. Thanks.